welcome to the first program in MBA Coal Management course. I'm your host, Hera Imtiaz, and with me is our subject expert, Mr. Zaid Chaudhary. Today is our topic about introduction to management. Welcome, expert. Thank you. Please introduce the topic to students we are going to deal in today. Hello, students. Management is a vast subject because we all manage our lives day in and day out. We manage our households. We manage our all activities. We manage our studies. We manage our entertainment. People manage small businesses. People manage companies. And people also manage global corporations. So therefore, to understand the concept of management, we need to understand some basic terms which are also the basic concepts of management. The basic terms are organizations, goal, management. Organizations can be defined as people working together and coordinating their actions to achieve specific goals. Now, these could be small organizations. Even two people working together is an organization. And uh, there could be big organizations like multinationals. And uh, any systematic working by groups of people is also an organization. And these organizations are goal-directed. They have to achieve certain goals. What are goals? As you can see, goal can be defined as a desired future condition that the organization seeks to achieve. The words, aims, goals, and objectives are interchangeable, but they have the same concept behind. They are futuristic, that what the manager wants to achieve. And the whole organization is making an effort to achieve these goals. Now, therefore, you can very well guess that it is absolutely essential to have the right sorts of goals because if the goals are not correct, the effort will be misdirected and will not be making the profit that we want to or will not be achieving our ends that we have in view. And this is for what we have our organizations. And this is what is the direction and the purpose of our management. Now, let us define management. Management can be defined as the process of using organizational resources to achieve the organization's goals by planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Now, you will see just now that these are the basic four functions of the organization. And what are the other key concepts? The other key concepts are three M's, which means men, material or machinery, and money. And also, there are certain skills. For example, we need information, we need capital, and we need financial resources also. And we need technical skills for the purpose of completing the processes involved, whether in manufacturing or in services. Now, all these resources, including men and material and machinery and time and the finances, and uh, the technical skills and human resource are all goal-directed and they are 
there to perform functions assigned by the manager to achieve the ends of the organization, which mostly is profit, but there are other organizations which are not for profit or maybe for social services and all these need to be managed with all these resources that we have mentioned. What is organizational performance? I can see it has two major aspects. One is efficiency and the other is effectiveness. What are these and how are they related to performance? Efficiency is related to processes, that is efficient use of resources and uh, most economic use of resources or we can also say optimal use of resources that is without much wastage or without any unnecessary hassle we can achieve the ends that we want and we can get the production without wastage. Effectiveness is related to ends. That is, what are our objectives and how many of these we have achieved and how successfully. If we are able to achieve the ends of the organization, we are effective and the organization is working effectively. But if ultimately we find that many of the ends have not been achieved, it means that our business has not been working effectively. But if on the other side we find that much of the resources have been utilized uneconomically or wasted, that means that we have not been working efficiently. So this is what we mean by efficiency and effectiveness. After these basic terms, let us come to managers and the functions they perform. Well, there are some big names in management, for example, Henry Feil. What were his contribution in articulating these concepts? Henry Feil was a chief executive officer of a mining company at the end of 19th century. He greatly contributed to the study of science of management. According to him, management is composed of four functions, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Now, as you can see, planning is the process used by managers to identify and select appropriate goals and uh, courses of action for an organization. Now, three steps to good planning. Which goals should be pursued? Which means that the manager must be very clear about the goals to be pursued. How should the resources be allocated to the achievement of these goals? And how should the goals be attained? That is, the processes that have to be managed by the manager for attaining these goals. Now, since planning is related to goal achievement and uh, how these goals are to be achieved, we have to decide what sort of organizational structure we need for achieving these goals and what sort of people we need, that is, the people with skills and the people with qualifications and what is our skill inventory and uh, how do we need to fit jobs with the skills of our human resource, how most effectively to lead and direct people and by functioning standards of control, what functions a control should have or what is our control mechanism which is based on monitoring. So this is the detail of planning process as related to planning, 
organizing, leading, and control. In organizing, managers create relationship and group people. On what basis they do that? Obviously, the people are to be grouped according to the processes and according to the skills. And if we have created departments or units and subunits in the factory or in the organization, we have to group people to maximum efficiency. That is, we could achieve our goals with the least cost and with optimum use of resources. So people have to be organized for working together. The structure of working relationships between organizational members is determined by the manager and he organizes the groups and teams accordingly. And this also naturally leads to a delegation of authority and also defining responsibility at various levels. And therefore, the people have to be made clear about their responsibilities. This also leads us to job specifications and job analysis and assignments and target setting, which may be coming late in this course. And these people are also variously grouped into departments and sections and maybe the, each department has its own targets and its own goals to achieve with the, the time given to them. I suppose leading is also a managerial function. How do managers look at it? Of course, leading is a very important managerial function. But the problem is all managers are not leaders. However, they have to perform this role. And this role includes coordinating the work of the people because people are doing various sorts of work and there are precedences and successions. Some activities have to be completed before others start. And also there are supportive activities. So this is the role of a leader to coordinate. Similarly, the direction. Every organization has a direction and the direction is mostly related to objectives. And manager being above other people, he knows the direction and he can also educate people about the direction and they can jointly work to achieve the ends and not lose their direction meanwhile. And also the leaders are to raise the commitment level of people and this level is achieved only when the manager is not a manager only but he also is a leader and he works with people as a team, as a team leader, and causes them to be committed to the organization. And this is also related to motivating people. Now, motivation is the task of leader, of course. And how to motivate people? With a pat on the back, there are monetary incentives, there are non-monetary incentives. So all of these have to be used at the appropriate time to motivate the people. And this is the function of the manager as a leader. And what about controlling? Do you think it also plays an important part in managerial function? Yes, but there's another word that comes before controlling although that we have not here mentioned as a separate uh, managerial role, and that is monitoring. Monitoring and controlling come together because if we have a plan, we would want 
the organization to go according to that plan. And there are all the chances that uh, the organization or the work may go astray or it may not remain according to plan due to various reasons in which there are uh, rising of new technologies, materials not reaching in time, or we uh, are not getting uh, the due technical advice that we must have at certain times. So there could be many reasons, but all these processes d during the work must be monitored first. And there is to be a whole monitoring system for this purpose, which will generate reports at various intervals. And if we find that there are variances or variations or deviation, we must set things right. Sometimes we have different levels of tolerance, and uh, we call these the uh, uh, lower level of warning,